Hindu news analysis dated August 19, 2023. Let us move on into the first article. You can go through this the disc, uh, discussion now. Take a look at this new uh, news article that is um, says that while speaking at a conference at Ramanadapuram, the Tamil Nadu Chief Minister mentioned that retrieving the Kachatibu Island from Sri Lanka will resolve the issues faced by Tamil Nadu fishermen in this conference. The Chief Minister also announced some subsidies for fishermen. This is about the news article. In, in this context, let us discuss the Kachatibu issue in detail. The Kachatibu issue is a territorial dispute between India and Sri Lanka over the uninhabited island, island in Park Strait. The island is located between about 16 km from the coast of Tamil Nadu and 30 km from the coast of Sri Lanka. Uh, the island is uninhabited uh, as there is no source of drinking water on the island. The only structure on the uh, island is St. Uh, Anthony Church. Uh, the island has been a source of conflict between the two countries since 20th century during the British colonial rule. The island was a past part of Madras, uh, past part of Madras presidency in 1974. India and Sri Lanka signed an agreement that gave to Sri Lanka. The agreement was signed under the leadership of the then Indian Prime Minister Indra Gandhi. The agreement aimed to settle the maritime boundary disputes between India and Sri Lanka. But the agreement was controversial in India and many peoples in Tamil Nadu continue to demand that return of island back to India. The main reason for the dispute is the island is a valuable fishing ground. The Indian fishermen have the traditionally fishing, fished in the water around the island. But since 1974 agreement, they have been harassed and arrested by Sri Lankan Navy. This has uh, caused a lot of resentment in Tamil Nadu and it is a major political issue in the state in recent years. There have been a number of attempts to resolve the Gachatibu issues in 2008 and the Indian government appointed a committee to study the issue. The committee recommended uh, the island to be returned to India but Sri Lankan government rejected the recommendation of this committee in 2013. Indian government and Sri Lankan government signed a new agreement that allows the Indian fishermen to uh, fish in the waters around Gachatibu. However, the agreement was not effective in the Resolving issues is the and there have been a continued reports of harassment and arrest of the fishermen in that area. So the Kachatibu is a complex issue and there is no easy solution. However, it is an important issue for both India and Sri Lanka and it should be resolved in a way that it is a fair to both countries. There are many arguments for and against uh, the return of the uh, Kachatibu to India. Now let us see the arguments in favor of returning to India. See, many peoples claim that island is a part of India for centuries and it is a valuable fishing ground for Indian fishermen. Also, Sri Lankan Navy has been harassing and arresting Indian fishermen in the borders around island. So, uh, the return of island would solve many, uh, many of the issues for Tamil Nadu fishermen. Now, what are the arguments against returning the Kachatibu to Indian Sea? The island is now a part of Sri Lanka's uh, territorial waters. The Sri Lankan Sri Lankan government has inv invested in the infrastructure on the islands on the return of island would affect other territorial disputes in the region also. The Sri Lankan fishermen claimed that Indian fishermen uses the big fishing ground, trawlers and co cost of overfishing in region which leads to losses of Sri Lankan fishermen. So the Kachatibu issue is a sensitive one and it is unlikely to be resolved anytime soon. The Tamil Nadu government has always been a critical of the issue because, uh, because the island's transfer was done without consulting the Tamil Nadu assembly. This resulted in huge protest within the states. So this is all uh, we need to know about Kachatibu issue. Which, uh, now let us move on into the next topic. Take a look at this article. This is about India's Chandra, Chandrayaan mission. Three, uh, that uh, on August 17th, the propul propulsion module and the lander module of Chandrayaan 3 um, successfully separated from each other. Uh, then yesterday, August 18th, the lander module uh, under a 28 d boosting operation. This is done to reduce the orbital diameter of the lander module. This is about the article given here in this discussion. We will see few about the main components of the mission and so are the three main components in the Chandrayaan. Uh, the, they, they are propulsion module, lander module and rover. First propulsion module, this is the uh, largest module of Chandrayaan 3. It is responsible for carrying lander and rover to the moon. 
it also has a communication system that allows the lander and rover to communicate with the earth next is a lander module this is a module that will land on the moon it has a number of scientific instruments that will be used to study the lunar surface it has a robotic arm that is used to deploy the rover and the lander module is named as vikram lander next is the rover this is a small wheeled vehicle uh, that will explore uh, the lunar surface uh, it uh, has a number of scientific instruments that will be used to study the lunar geology and environment this rover is named as a pragyan uh, now let us see these three components in detail first let us take up the propulsion module the propulsion module plays a critical role in the chandrayaan uh, it carries the lander module from the lunar vehicle injection stage to final lunar orbit in addition to this the propulsion module has its own scientific payload this payload will uh, operate once the lander module separates from the propulsion module the payload is uh, called spectropolarimeter of habitable planet earth which is shape um, which is uh, this payload will be used to study the spec um, signature of earth and the scientific payload in the propulsion module is expected to function for a period of 3 to 6 months gathering data from the orbit uh, around the moon so this is all about the propulsion module level now let us uh, take the lander mission as we know the lander module is named as vikram lander this vikram lander is crucial component of chandrayaan 3 it is designed for soft landing on moon surface as we uh, saw earlier the lander module underwent a successful deboosting operation uh, uh, the deboosting operation aims um, uh, to gradually decrease the altitude of the lander orbit preparing it for controlled descent into moon uh, surface uh, moon surface uh, the lander module is expected to land on the moon surface on coming august 23 the lander has four scientific payloads these uh, payloads will help sci- scientists to study the uh, quirks of thermal um, Uh, properties of lunar surfaces uh, changes in the plasma near the surface and also passive expand to accurately measure the distance between the earth and moon and fourth payload of vikram lander comes from the nasa so this is all about the lander module finally let us see the rover module that is pragyan once the uh, lander module has successfully landed the surface of moon the pragyan rover will be deployed there there are two payloads on this pragyan rover so this rover is designed to study the chemical and mineral composition of the lunar surface it also determines the composition of the elements such as magnesium aluminum and iron in lunar surface and in the rocks uh, this rover um, mission lifespan is one lunar day which is approximately 14 earth days it will be able to travel up to a distance of 500 meter on lunar surface the rover uh, will also used to search water on the moon uh, the pragyan rover is a significant technological achievement for india because it is the first indian rover to land on the moon so this is about this discussion in this discussion we have see few uh, points about propulsion module vikram lander uh, and pragyan rover now let us move on into the next part of our discussion um take a look at this editorial article as you can see in this title this article speaks about technological ties between the india and japan so why this topic suddenly appeared in news see last month india and japan agreed to collaborate on semiconductor technology the collaboration aims to create a more a resilient supply chain for semiconductor technology between india and japan under the agreement both the countries have agreed to work together for the joint development of semiconductor ecosystem so because of this only this article appeared in the news today in this discussion we will understand some important points provided in the news article before that let us learn some basics about india japan ties according to government sources india and japan ties it is back to head back to 6th century as we all know buddhism originated in india later it was spread to many other countries japan was also one of the country that got attracted to the buddhism so this is was the main factor behind the establishment of the ties between india and japan later in 9, in 1752 ad an indian buddhist monk named bodhisena visited japan this was the earliest document direct contact of india with japan apart from this 
some prominent indian leaders like uh, swami vivekananda rabindranath tagore and netaji subhash chandra bose have visited japan this also helped india to uh, establish ties with japan despite these factors the formal uh, diplomatic relations between the india and japan were established on 1952 after the signing a peace treaty ever since the establishment of diplomatic relation the two countries have enjoyed a cordial relations uh, so with this information now uh, let us uh, learn some few uh, some points about india's defense on economic relations with japan first let us see the difference between uh, 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 difference rela- difference defense relations see the defense cooperation uh, between india and uh, japan began in 1999 Uh, see in 1999 the respective coast guards of japan and india conducted a maritime exercise then in 2004 both the defense forces of india and japan had uh, collaborated in repairing the damages caused by 2004 tsunami however the defense cooperation between two countries gained momentum only in 2014 Uh, in 2014 our uh, prime minister visited japan under two countries elevated the relationship to the special strategic and global partnership so this marked a, a new era of different co- uh, defense cooperation between two countries note that japan is also one of the four countries that uh, that india uh, has two plus uh, two ministerial dialogue on defense cooperation apart from this japan conducts a regular uh, joint military exercise called dharma guardian it is an annual exercise which helps to enhance the defense cooperation between the two countries so now let us uh, see about the economic ties between the uh, uh, ties uh, between the japan is considered as a key partner of economic transformation this is big india's economic transformation because of the volume of trade between two countries has increased year by year see in 2021 japan has the was the 13th largest trading partner for india also note that direct investment in japan has increased every year so in 2021 japan was the fifth largest investor for india apart from these uh, factors japan has been extending bilateral loans and grants um, to india since 1958 for example some projects in india like ahmedabad by uh, speed uh, high speed railway line uh, western car- dedicated freight corridor and delhi mumbai industrial corridor are being carried out with the, with the japanese assistance so this is all about economic uh, interest between india and japan now let us see some technological ties between india and japan so this technological ties uh, was discussed in editorial in india and japan have various agreements related to the technology in the past however the present prominent one is cooperation on semiconductor supply chains this partnership on semiconductor supply chain will focus on five areas it includes semiconductor design a semiconductor manufacturing semiconductor equipment research and establishing resilience in semiconductor supply chain and also it includes the talent development in semiconductor technology so these are the five areas which the partnership will focus on so by focusing on these five areas uh, both countries will cooperate with each other on semiconductor supply chain apart from this it also facilitates the technology transfer between the two countries as uh, india is witnessing the growth in information technology sector there is a huge demand for semiconductor products across the various industries so the semiconductor partnership between two countries will help to strengthen the india it sector Uh, and in addition to this partnership will also diversify india's semiconductor imports as india is currently importing most of its semiconductor products from china and taiwan so these are the some of the benefits to india regarding this partnership so this is all about this discussion in this discussion we have seen some of the important points about india japan relationship and uh, some points about technological cooperation economic cooperation and technological co- defense and technological cooperation this is all about this topic now let us move on into the next part of the discussion uh, look at this news the news article says that our prime minister will visit south Co- south africa to attend the 15th brics summit this is a significant event because this will be the first in person brics summit since 2019 This is about the news article in this discussion we will understand the importance of BRICS for India as we know BRICS is an acronym for Brazil 
ரஷ்யா இந்தியா சைனா அண்ட் சவுத் ஆஃப்ரிக்கா பிரிக்ஸ் கண்ட்ரீஸ் ஆர் ஆல் மேஜர் எமர்ஜிங் எக்கனாமிஸ் அண்ட் தே ஹேவ் பின் ஒர்க்கிங் டுகெதர் டு ப்ரமோட் தி எக்கனாமிக் கோஆப்ரேஷன் அண்ட் டெவலப்மெண்ட் ஸோ நவ் த பிரிக்ஸ் இஸ் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் ஃபார் இந்தியா அண்ட் வாட் இஸ் த ரிலவன்ஸ் ஃபார் பிரிக்ஸ் டு இந்தியா ஃபர்ஸ்ட்லி இஸ் இட் ப்ரொவைட்ஸ் இட் இந்தியா வித் அ பிளாட்ஃபார்ம் டு என்கேஜ் வித் மேஜர் எக்கனாமிஸ் திஸ் இஸ் அ இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் ஃபார் இந்தியா பிகாஸ் இட் ஹெல்ப்ஸ் டு டைவர்சிஃபை தி India's uh, economic ties and reduce its de- dependence on dependent on US and Europe secondly the BRICS can help India to promote its economic interest see the structural imbalances caused by global financial crisis of 2008 and new threats to global economy posed by the tra- trade wars are yet to be resolved so in this time the growing contribution of BRICS to the world economy create an opportunity for new initiatives that uh, would support the sustainable and inclusive growth as the BRICS countries have 17% share of world trade thirdly the brics can help india to address the common challenges for example brics countries have been working together to address the climate change and other environmental issues sir next is in india can use brics to promote its soft power see india has been trying to project itself as a responsible stakeholder in global community and brics can help india to this overall uh, uh, BRICS is an important forum for India to engage with other major economies and promote its own economic interest. So, what is the relevance of BRICS to India? See, the BRICS countries have increased their um, trade and investment with each other. For example, India's trade with Brazil has increased by more than 500% since the creation of BRICS. countries have worked together on number of development projects such as uh, brics bank and brics contingent reserve agreement as we know brics bank is in new development bank another importance of brics is addressing the climate change brics countries have worked together to address the climate change by taking many steps for example they have pledged to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions finally brics countries have worked together to promote the security and stability in the region they have condemned the terrorism and call for increased cooperation against it india can also uh, use bridge to resolve the regional disputes we know that india is pursuing a membership in international groups like un security council and uh, nuclear suppliers group nsg mm, however the challenges particularly from china have hindered the india's progress so brics can serve as a platform to engage constructively with china and resolving the mutual disputes and improving the cooperation so this will uh, help india's aim aim of becoming a member of un security council finally india can use brics as an alternative forum for infrastructure financing as the new development bank of brics have provided funding for infrastructure projects in many member country, countries including india so these are the some of the importance of brics in regarding to india so this discussion is important for mains examination please take a note of it uh, so this is all about this topic now let us move on into the next discussion now coming to this news article it takes a moody's investor service uh, here moody's is actually a credit trading agency uh, it has reaffirmed the india's rating at uh, b a a uh, 3 is the, so this is the connection of the article given here we can discuss about credit trading agency in dll uh, credit rating agency is an institution that assesses the credit risk of a company through a series of rating uh, these are the assessment are often used in capital market as a benchmark for investors decision to uh, decisions so there are three largest credit trading agencies in the world moody standard and a poors and fish uh, so these are the three agencies of a uh, big uh, which are the three uh, assigned as a credit trading crs uh, Uh, CRAs uh, use a variety of uh, um, factors including company's financial investment uh, statements, deep level, depth levels, management teams, industry. It operates in so ratings are given using alphabetical codes. These ratings are used by the investors uh, to assess the risk of a particular investment. A higher rating means a lower risk, while a lower rating indicates a higher risk. So the investor use the rating to decide which. investment to buy and which one to sell so these are the basic information about credit rating now let us see the importance of credit rating agencies in capital market firstly they boost the investors confidence high rated debt 
securities are uh, uh, generally considered as safer investment so this help investors and lenders to make informed decisions about where to allocate their funds secondly the credit rating agencies help to reduce the risk in the financial markets credit ratings can help to reduce the risk in the financial markets by making it more difficult for borrowers with the poor rate poor credit ratings to obtain the financing so this can help to prevent the financial crisis the next important thing about credit rating credit credit trading agencies is they help in improving the transparency of the market this can reduce the risk of the fraud and other financial crimes because uh, the credit trading agencies provide the investors with the information about credit worthiness of the borrowers and finally the credit rating agencies promote the efficiencies in the market as the credit rating agencies make easier um, for investors to compare different investments helps to find the best investment for the investors despite uh, importance of credit rating agencies they have been uh, criticized um, for the role of financial uh, crisis of 2008 another major criticism is a conflict of interest so some claims uh, that 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 there are can be bias in rating provided by these agencies another criticism regarding credit rating agencies is that they contribute to market ballot lead by the downgrading securities during economic downturns this can leads to financial stress in the market finally the methodologies used to buy um, credit trading agencies are often complex and not fully transparent this can make it difficult for investors to understand the basis for rating so this is all about the criticism regarding the credit trading agencies with this we can conclude this question uh, conclude this a question and let us move on into the prelims practice questions now look at the first prelims practice question it is about chandrayaan 3 look at the first statement the st- uh, aim of the mission is to demonstrate the safe and soft landing on the lunar surface yes this is statement is correct now coming to the second statement it uh, consists of lander model uh, propulsion module and a rover yes it is a three component as we see in the discussion so the statement is also correct at the third statement the pragyan rover will be operated for 14 lunar days this is incorrect because the pragyan rover uh, has a life span of one lunar day which is 14 earth days so this statement is incorrect now look at the fourth statement only the lander and rover will uh, carry the scientific payloads this is incorrect because all three components including the propulsion module will carry the scientific payloads so the statement is incorrect so uh, the answer is uh, b now uh, look at the second question it is about the bricks uh, c the first statement the first brick submit was uh, held at rio de janeiro in 2009 this uh, statement is wrong originally there were four nations grouped as brick uh, the brick uh, br brazil russia uh, ic uh, india china south africa becomes the member only uh, in 2010 uh, it was the last country to join the brics so the first brics summit was uh, held in russia and not in brazil so the statement one is incorrect the statement uh, two is uh, south africa was the last to join the brics grouping so this uh, statement is correct so the correct statement is b two only uh, now uh, coming to the question of which of the following statement regarding credit trading agencies is incorrect look at the four options and uh, incorrect is option b that is credit trading agencies do not assign credit ratings slowly solely to the government issued securities they issue credit ratings to a wide uh, range of dipped instruments including government corporations financial institutions and private companies so the correct an- option is b uh, now uh, this is a this uh, quiz for uh, today uh, you answer in the comment section this is the main question for uh, today try uh, try try to write an answer and post it in the comment section now we have come to the end of our discussion if you like the video please share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe the channel uh, thank you thanks for watching have a nice day